Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to the living Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to his name. Jesus is Lord o'er all the earth. He is the King of salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to his name. Jesus is Lord o'er all the earth. Yes, he is the king of creation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing praise to his name. Oh, yes, glory to God. He's the king. He's the king. The only king. God has made his only son, Yeshua HaMashiach, king. And I'm so pleased to sing that little chorus because we will be reading here on June 29. June 29. Can you believe it? We're almost to the end of the month. We will be reading from Beit Melechim. Second Kings chapter 15 and portion of 16. If you'd like to turn to there, Second Kings chapter 15. And it's really a history of a whole bunch of more kings. I'll try to make it interesting. And why is that? Why is that reason? The reason is the Jews rejected God. They rejected their king. He's king over all the creation. And he chose them to be his very special people. But they have rejected, and they have complained, and they have requested that they have a man. They want, they want a king. Oh, yes, they want a king like all the other nations. As though all the other nations were doing well. They weren't. Okay, so... Hallelujah, sing to Jesus, the King. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, became king. He was 16 years old when he became king. He's just a youth, 16 years old, capable of being king over this nation? Let's see how it works out. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Yeholiah of Jerusalem, And he did what was right. We finally can say that about one of them. He did what was right. Praise God for 52 years in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father, Amaziah, had done, except, except, they just refused to obey the Lord here, that the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And then the Lord struck the king so that he was a leper. And I've often wondered, why was that if he was doing right? Was it because of the high places? He was a leper until the day of his death. So he dwelt in an isolated house in Yatam. The king's son was over the royal house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah, 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 and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah rested with his fathers, 
and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And then Yotam, his son, reigned in his place. In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned over Israel in Samaria six months. Six months. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And then Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and struck and killed him in front of the people. And he reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Zechariah, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord which he spoke to Jehu, saying, Your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it was. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned a month, a month, a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gadi, went up from Tirzah, came to Samaria, and struck Shalom, the son of Jabesh in Samaria, and killed him. And he reigned in his place. So now we have many men vying for the kingship. I don't like you. I'll plot against you, kill you, take over. Very unstable. Very unstable. Now the rest of the acts of Shalom and the conspiracy which he led, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. And then from Tirzah, Menahem attacked Tipsah, all who were there and its territory. Because they did not surrender, therefore he attacked it. All the women there who were with child, he ripped open. This was a very evil man. Ripped open. In the 39th year of Esariah, king of Judah, Menahem, the son of Gadi, became king over Israel and reigned 10 years in Samaria. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And, and they, this doesn't, see, this isn't registering with them. Everything they're doing is in the sight of the Lord. Good lesson for you and me today. Everything we're saying and doing, including me sitting here, is in the sight of the Lord. And so my heart wants to do right. How about yours? You want to do right, I know you do. That's why you're here. He reigned 10 years in Samaria, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. Paul, king of Assyria, came against the land, and Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to strengthen the kingdom under his control. And Menahem exacted the money from Israel, from all the very wealthy, from each man fifty shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and did not stay there in the land. <clears throat> now the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Menahem rested with his fathers, and then Pekahiah, his son, reigned in his place. In the fiftieth year of Esariah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned two years. Two years. And he did evil 
in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And then Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, an officer of his, conspired against him and killed him in Samaria, in the citadel of the king's house, along with Argob and Ariach, and with him were 50 men of Gilead. He killed him, and he reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, indeed, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And so now we're going to move along. I think I need a sip. In the 52nd year of Esariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, became king over Israel and Samaria and reigned 20 years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel sin. And in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglach, Peleser, king of Assyria, came and took Ejon, Abel, Bet Macha, Yanawa, Kadesh, Hasor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Nephtali. And he carried them captive to Assyria. Imagine that. Stripped the land of the people and carried them off. And then Hoshea, the son of Elah, led a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, and struck and killed him. So he reigned in his place in the 20th year of Yatam, the son of Uzziah. Uzziah, Uzziah. How many murders have we already mentioned? Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, indeed they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, Yatam, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, we're talking now about both sections, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Yerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right. Hallelujah, we finally have one. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. However, however, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Yatam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Resin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, against Judah. So Yatam rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father, and then Ahaz, his son, reigned in his place. And we move right along, y'all. Ooh, Scott is here. Praise God. Give us some enlightenment, dear brother Scott. We move right along to chapter 16 of Second Kings. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, Ahaz, the son of Yatam, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, and he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord his God, as his father David had done. 
but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire. We're talking about occult stuff. He made his son pass through the fire. According to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel, and he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. And then Resen, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war. Here we go again, to make war. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Resen, king of Syria, captured Elat for Syria and drove the men of Judah from Elat. And then the Edomites went to Elat and dwell there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Syria and from the hand of the king of Israel who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria heeded him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Kir, and killed Resin. Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was in Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah, the priest, the design of the altar and its pattern according to all its workmanship. And then Uriah, the priest, built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. <clears throat> uh, are we saying that they consulted the Lord and he said to do this? No. The priest is just doing what the king said. So Uriah, the priest, made it before King Ahaz came back from Damascus. And when the king came back from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and made offerings on it. So he burned his burnt offering and his grain offering, and he poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. He also brought the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the house of the Lord. And he put it on the north side of the new altar. And then King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, On the great new altar, burn the morning offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt sacrifice, and his grain offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their grain offering and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice. And the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Uriah the priest according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off, I mean, look at the destruction now, cut off the panels of the carts and removed the lavers from them. He took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it and put it on a pavement of stones. Also, he removed the Sabbath pavilion, 
which they had built in the temple. And he removed the king's outer entrance from the house of the Lord on account of the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? So Ahaz rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And then Hezekiah, 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 his son reigned in his place. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Can you believe all that? And I don't know, but I, 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 since Scott's here, Scott, do we still have the, all these books of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah in Israel? Are they a lost item? All right, we move right along to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Oh, and the, we're in the excitement of the ministry. And then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered, and said, Jesus, or we should say, Yeshua, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded this became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver they had spent their money on these occult practice literature books same problem today same problem so the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed hallelujah the lord was magnified and when these things were accomplished paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through macedonia and achaia to go to jerusalem saying after i have been there i must also see rome so he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way, or we would say Christianity. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation, and he said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia 
and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath, and they cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion. Isn't that just like the devil? And rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's traveling companions. And when Paul wanted to go in to the people, the disciples would not allow him. And then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him, pleading that he would not venture into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Can you imagine that for two hours? And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana. He's stopping this two-hour chant. And of the image which fell down from Zeus. Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. The image which fell down from Zeus? <clears throat> Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. And we leave you on that cliffhanger and we move right along to Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord is building Jerusalem. The Lord is building Jerusalem. He's gathering together the outcasts of Israel, healing broken hearts, binding up their wounds. The Lord is building, the Lord is building up Jerusalem. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, 
who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens that cry. He does not delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders and fills you with the finest wheat. Isn't that true? In America, it's true. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He casts out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. Isn't that true? What he's done for Israel is extremely precious. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. One day we will, but they have not known them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's the conclusion of all of it. Praise the Lord. All right, we wrap up today, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 18, verses 4 and 5. Proverbs 18, 4 and 5. And Connie's put it right on there for you. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Neither of those things are good. We can understand that, right? <clears throat> and oh, please take in Kathy's graphics. Take in Kathy's graphics. Oh, such beautiful graphics. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa, for gathering it all, putting it on. And, um, and here you take all that and you put it on YouTube. Ooh, imagine that. Goodness gracious. One more outlet to get God's word out. However we can do it, let's avail ourselves of every day productively learning of him. Thank you, Scott, for coming and giving us such wonderful teachings. I can't wait to finish and then I can sit down and go back and see what you've written. Let's close in prayer. This mighty tool, mighty, mighty tool of prayer. And the Lord asked us to pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. And so we shall. First thing, Father God, we want to hold up Jerusalem. We want to hold up Israel from border to border and every place in between. And we're asking you, dear Jesus, dear Yeshua, for peace. Your peace, Lord, not the world's temporary peace that fails us time and time again, but Lord, your peace, that inner peace that only you can give. We thank you for Holy Spirit 
We thank you, you have sent Holy Spirit. And it's his time of ministry on this earth now. Thank you for him, Lord. Thank you for Holy Spirit. We bless you that you come and, and you bring revelation. You, you enlighten. You, you build up. You comfort. You lead. You instruct. Oh, you are a marvelous Holy Spirit. Thank you. And we call on you today. We need you. Please come to each and every one of us. Help us. Hear us. We wait to hear from you. Hallelujah. Thank you for this wonderful word today, Lord. We are truly blessed. Truly blessed. Father God, we hold up America. And there are others here. Please hold up your nations, your uh, leadership before the Lord. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would use every leadership in every country. Lord, the people are crying out for you. Some live in very oppressive countries. They are abused. They are purposely kept poor. They are not given help. They are not given help. And Lord, there are a lot of evil things going on in Israel and in America and all the other nations. You know much better than we. And so Lord, we'd ask you to keep revealing truth. Reveal your truth, Lord your word, that we might walk with you. We might not be swayed to the left or to the right, but that we might walk each day with you according to your word. Lord, I'm, I'm still praying and asking you to, to bless and to comfort these people in Florida who've suffered this massive building destruction. Something's not right with all that. And we'd ask that you would reveal the truth, that people not have to be grieved in their spirits their whole life over the wonderful loved ones they lost, not knowing what happened. Please, Lord, reveal the truth of what happened to that building. And we'd ask, Lord, that if there are any more missing people alive under that rubble. Oh, Father God, give all of these responders strength. Give them strength to lift more things, to search, to keep their lungs, Lord, free of all this debris and dust. Please, Lord, please send them the help they need. Lord, I hold up our sister Janine. And once again, she's under medical scrutiny of what to do. Father, we hold up our sister Janine. Lord, you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. We pray that word as a medicine, Lord, over Janine. We pray it. Lord, please, please, Lord, cause healing to come upon her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Encourage her heart, Lord. Strengthen her. Lord, I'm also holding up Kenya, and I'm asking you to reign, to reign on the northern desert. Lord, the crops are dying. Famine will come. They have worked so hard. Just my little Kenya Village Connection Ministry alone, we bought a thousand dollars of seed and gave it out, gave it out to many, many places. And the people hand dug, hand hoed, hand planted. Lord, please have mercy, have mercy and send rain that crops would still produce a harvest for them. Father, we're asking that you 
cause your church all over the earth to rise up in these end times. Rise up bold. Become evangelistic. Send forth your word any way that they can do it. Send it forth in every language and in every way, every medium. We have all this great technology now to reach the ends of the earth. Father God, please, please, we're asking, we're asking that every soul hear the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach and have a, a very good time span to receive him. Lord, you don't want anybody to go to hell. We don't want anybody to go to hell. And we have friends and relatives that we are praying for. We are concerned. You know you are hearing the prayers. And so, Lord, we'd ask, bring many to you today. Bring a great harvest of saved souls to you today. Open up their ears and their eyes and their understanding to receive you and to understand you are mighty, you are powerful, you change lives, you change situations. You help us to become a growing Christian. Every day a little more in your image. Please, Lord, we lay ourselves before you. And all of God's people cried, a hearty amen, and went about your day praising him, sharing him all that you can. Get out there. Don't just sit back somewhere. Don't waste it just sitting somewhere. But get up. Let's go after it, church. Let's go after it. In Yeshua HaMashiach's precious name. Love you all so much. Thank you, Scott. Bye-bye.